In France, there's been a string of uh, terror attacks and a lot of people are blaming Charlie Hebdo's cartoons of Muhammad or they're blaming French laïcité, uh, secularism or the separation of religion uh, from the state. From my perspective, it's not got anything to do with the cartoons or with French laïcité. Those are excuses. We need to name uh, those who attack and uh, kill in the name of uh, religion. They are a far-right political movement. They have state power in places like Iran and Saudi Arabia. They are the Islamists. I think Western governments don't really have a problem with Islamism. As long as they're slaughtering people in the Middle East and Asia and North Africa, it's fine. Uh, the only problem they have with Islamism is when its terrorism enters a European and Western territory. And I think that's one of the problems, the relationships, for example, with Saudi government, with the Iranian government, pillars of the Islamist movement globally, um, is one reason why this is an untouchable issue to some extent. And I think for them, the Islamists and their supporters, they like to conflate Islamist, which is a far-right movement, with Islam, which is a belief, and Muslims, who are people like everyone else. And I think in fact, if we are going to be able to challenge this movement, we have to separate these. With Islam, we have to say it's a belief like any other. You can make fun of it, you can believe in it, that's your right. It's part of freedom of conscience, which includes the right to religion and the right to be free from religion. And of course, then you've got uh, the Islamist movement. That's, it's a political movement. We have to fight it politically. Um, the other aspect, of course, is that is because of this conflation between Islamist, Islam and Muslims, you find a lot of good people who are anti-racist, concerned that criticism of Islam or Islamism uh, will lead to discrimination against Muslims. And I think it's important to always clarify and make those distinctions. For me, I think um, the issue is that you also have a lot of people on the left, and I say that as someone on the left myself, that sees Islamism as a force of resistance against imperialism. Uh, and, and, you know, they, their argument is that people join Islamist forces because of social ex exclusion or because they're discriminated against or because of racism. And my question to that left is, would you say the same to those who are organizing in neo-Nazi groups in, in, in Europe? Would you say that they have a right to do that because of social exclusion, because of disillusionment, because of disenfranchisement, because they feel that they don't have a place in society? You wouldn't. You know that to organize against racism, against discrimination, there are other alternatives, revolutionary alternatives, alternatives in trade unions and progressive social and political movements. The the fact that you think that for us minorities, the only option we have to resist exclusion and discrimination is through a fascist movement like the Islamists is absurd, it is ethically bankrupt, and it is offensive and racist, you know. And I think that is something my message is always to the left because the far right for me is the same as the Islamist movement. For me, my message is to those good people, the, those anti-racists, those people who are pro-refugees, pro-immigrants. And if good people don't do that, one, you leave all these people who are fighting uh, this extreme right movement uh, at great risk to their lives on their own, they, they have no one to back them, but also you leave the space open for the neo-Nazis and the far right in uh, our countries to then take center stage to talk about these issues. And the point is that we don't want them to be the spokesperson of uh, these issues because they are no different from the Islamists. If you look, you can see the similarities with uh, neo-Nazi groups, white supremacist groups, white nationalist groups, very clearly. They are um, fundamentally, um, they, they commit acts of violence in and of itself, for itself. You know, violence is a pillar of their, uh, their being. Uh, their politics are based on misogyny, homophobia, anti-Semitism. They are always talking about some glorious past. You know, the Italian fascists about glorious old days of Rome and the Islamists are talking about you know, this glorious days of golden age of Islam. 
uh, there are so many similarities between them. Um, where they see women's role, for example, that it has to be in the kitchen always. Um, you know, that sort of, they, they have so many similarities. And so, you know, having the far right talking about Islam from an anti-Muslim, an anti-migrant perspective doesn't do anyone any favors. Fundamentally, they aren't different. Of course, they might not be, um, you know, slaughtering entire generations today, but, you know, you just need to look at Nazi Germany to see what they're capable of doing. And depending on the level of power and degree of power that they get, they can commit similar atrocities. And I think what we need to do is people who believe in, in universal rights and values, people who believe in secularism and the separation of religion from the state, people who believe in freedom of expression, these people need to come and defend the dissenters uh, with, from Muslim backgrounds who are challenging the extreme right movement.